This video is freeware, so you can use it as you wish. Gaddafi arrested. Yahoo! Here in the heart of the Caucasus Mountains, this ancient Georgian watchtower is useful once again. Some part of base is also under construction. So From the top, Adam Bartniki, a European monitor, studies military movements on the South Ossetian side of a ceasefire line. What does he see? One of two new Russian bases nearing completion. In the area of our responsibility, we have a 9 on 12 Russian Federation bodyguards base. So it means are uh, like mushrooms, let's say. With their barracks and security lights, the new bases are home to 5,000 Russian military personnel, more than 10 times the number before the war. Nearby, Lia Chlatidze is one of the few civilians remaining in the border village of Ergeneti, Georgia. She lives among the abandoned grape arbors and burned ruins of 140 Georgian farmhouses. My parents are buried in the occupied territory. Who knows how many years will pass before I'm able to visit them. It's a human tragedy. I can't talk about it without crying. At the local military checkpoint, only dogs can cross the boundary line. The South Ossetians have cut irrigation canals and two more Russian bases blocked the road. Three years after the war between Georgia and Russia, this is the end of the road for Georgia. One kilometer behind me is Sinvali, which is the capital of the self-proclaimed nation of South Ossetia. To the south, in Gori, the birthplace of Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin, Nanuli Pervashili lives with three family members on $125 a month. She fled Skin Valley when the fighting started. We didn't take anything. We left empty-handed. Nearby, Georgian men play backgammon on a weekday morning. Shalva Erbakidze says they cannot return home. We don't work. They won't hire our people because we're refugees. In Georgia's capital, Tbilisi, debate rages as the war anniversary approaches. Opposition politician Nino Borjanadze accuses the government of celebrating defeat. Last year I, I raised the question uh, to the government. Uh, we celebrated the uh, 8th of August with fireworks and with concerts. I asked, what did we celebrate? What we are celebrating for? Uh, if we really win something, why nobody in Georgia knows about that, including me? Foreign Ministry spokesman Torniki Gordadze offers this response. We have survived. It was, it was a very serious attempt to destroy our statehood and uh, the very objective of this war was not the occupation of, the, of these two regions which still remain occupied today. It's 20% of the Georgian territory but the objective was to destroy uh, the current uh, government and current regime, to change the regime uh, in Georgia. To survive, Georgia's government has moved closer to the West. U.S. Marines now train Georgian soldiers. U.S. Ambassador John Bass says the training is for Afghanistan, where Georgia is the second largest non-NATO contributor of troops after Australia. They're increasing their contribution at a time when most allies and partners are decreasing their contribution. The timing of the training exercise seems to be a clear sign that the West is watching the Russian military with more than binoculars. James Brook, VOA News, Moretti, Georgia. See perhaps also. Info of 24th April 2005. After the first and at the second contact. See, if possible, these videos. Only 22 days passed. And then, 